If you're doing your GCSE further mathematics, you must have seen loads of questions like this. Now, if you've looked at any textbook or any mark scheme, you might have nearly died looking at how they solve these, all right? It's completely random, I do not like it, all right? They try and rearrange for this and eliminate and this and that and that and that. It is poor mathematical reasoning, all right? Now in the exam, they always say, do not use trial and improvement, but the marking, the mark scheme looks like trial and improvement to me. Yeah, just a bit more of a posh trial and improvement, okay? What they mean is don't just try and make up values of X, Y, and Z and find the one that works, okay? So what I ended up doing is I emailed one of the exam boards, you can see our conversation over here, and I said, look, the method that you guys use is not very mathematical. Can we use something known as Gaussian elimination? And they said, yes, okay? And this is the best way to solve any system of equations. I could have 10 different variables uh, and 10 lines of equations, okay? So let me show you guys how we do Gaussian elimination, or some of you guys might know as row echelon reduction. It's super simple. What you do is you write down these equations where you just write down the coefficients of x, y, z, okay? So x, y, z, okay? Uh, you don't need to write this, I'm just showing you guys what's going on. I'm actually gonna write this equation first, okay? Because the coefficient of x here is one. It's really nice and simple, keeping it like that. So what are the coefficients? The coefficient of x here is one, the coefficient of y here is zero, the coefficient of z is three, okay? So that's this one. Then it doesn't matter which other ones you choose. I'm just gonna choose uh, this one, okay? So the coefficient of x here is two, the coefficient of y here is one, and there is no coefficient of z. Then this one, here we have to be careful, there is no coefficient of x, there is a coefficient of y, and there's a coefficient of z here, one. So you guys might know this as a matrix. I'm actually gonna use, it's not really matrices, it's just the way we lay it out. We draw a vertical line, which represents the equals, and then we have, be careful, what did I do? I wrote the second one first, so it equals two, then I did this one, 13, and then this one, minus seven. Now to solve this, all we're going to do is rearrange this so that it becomes the identity matrix. What is the identity matrix? It's a leading set of ones, everything else zero. So this is a 3D identity matrix. In GCSE for the mass, we only know this one, right? But you can have it in any dimension as long as it's a square matrix. So we're looking for this, okay? I'm gonna put it over here for you guys so you know what we're looking for. Yeah, this is our goal. Okay, what do we need then? I need this number here to be a zero because look, the zero is the same, okay? I need this to be a zero, so what do I need to do? I'm gonna use this line to turn that into a zero. How do I do that? I'm gonna call this row one, row two, row three, okay? I'm going to take row one, which has a one here. I'm gonna times that by minus two. That'll make that minus two and add it to this. That's gonna make it zero, okay? Let's write that down. I am going to take row one. Yeah, I'm gonna times it by minus two. So I'm doing minus two lots of row one and I'm adding it to row two. Okay, row one does not get influenced by this. We call it the pivot row, yeah? So we have one, zero, three, two. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna times these numbers by minus two and add it to this. One times minus two is minus two. Minus two plus two, zero. Zero times minus two is zero. Plus one is just one. Three times by minus two is minus six, minus six plus zero is minus six. Two times by minus two is minus quattro, plus 13, nine. Okay, so that's that bit done, yeah? So then we have zero, minus two, one, minus seven, okay? Right, so this first, column is done. Look at the second column. 
I want zero, one, zero. I have a minus two. It's not looking good. Okay. What do I need to do? Well, I'm going to use row two, which has the one. This is my new pivot. I'm going to use that to change that into a zero because you can't use zero to change any other number, right? Because anything you times zero by is just going to keep everything else the same. So row two is now going to be our pivot. Okay. Now I'm going to write what I'm doing here and then we're going to do our matrix up here. How do I make this a zero? I'm going to times this by two and add it to this. Okay. One times two is two. Minus two is zero. So I'm going to do two lots of row two, then add it to row three this time. Okay. Now remember, row two is the pivot. So that's not going to change. Okay. And in fact, I'm not doing anything to row one either. So I can just rewrite row one and row two. So I have one, zero, three, two. And here, zero, one, minus six, nine. Zero, one, minus six, nine. Okay? Let's go through. We're going to times row two by two and add it to row three. Zero times two is zero, plus zero is zero. This would never be affected anyway because we've completed it, right? One times two is two, minus two, zero. Minus six times two is minus 12, plus one. Minus 12 plus one is minus 11. Nine times by two is 18. 18 minus seven, 11. Nice. You can actually pretty much finish this problem, but I'm going to show you guys how we're going to get the final answer. Now we have row one, row two, and row three. What does this line say? Remember, x, y, z. This is saying minus 11 z is 11. That means z is minus one. But I can really show that by just dividing both of these by minus 11. Okay? And that's going to turn into a one. All right? So... I'm going to do row 3 divided by minus 11. So I'll have 1, 0, 3, 2. Then I have 0, 1, minus 6, 9. Then I have 0, 0, 11 divided by minus 11 is 1. 11 divided by minus 11 is minus 1. Okay, now we're very close to reaching our goal. So we have row 1, row 2, and row 3. These first two columns are done. I need a one, zero, zero. Okay. So I'm going to do two things this time. I'm using the third row to turn both of these into zeros. Yeah. Now remember, these two columns are just not going to change. Yeah. We've already dealt with them. So we're going to get one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. And because this is my new pivot, that's not going to change either. I have one and minus one. So it's only four numbers really that I'm dealing with here. Okay, so what do I need to do? I want to make that a zero. One times minus three is minus three, plus three is zero, okay? So I'm going to times row three by minus three, then I'm adding it to row one. Well, oh, this one, I need to times this by six, then add it to this to make it zero. So I'm doing row three times six, then adding it to row two. All right. How is that going to look? Let's do this one first. One times minus three is minus three, minus three, plus three, zero. Minus one times minus three is positive three, positive three, plus two, five. Okay, that's that bit done. Let's do the last bit. One times six is six, minus six, zero. Uh, this is the next one. Minus one times six is minus six, minus six, plus nine, three. And there we go. There's my identity matrix. Don't forget, guys, this is your x, y, z. So what does the top line say? It's saying one x is five x is 5. 
This is saying y is 3. And this is saying z is minus 1. And that is our solution. This always works, provided there's one solution. When you get to A-level further maths, we have ways of using the determinant of a matrix to decide if it has infinite solutions, one solution, etc. But this will always find us a clean solution when it comes to GCSE further maths. And it's something that you guys should really practice. Obviously, I've been explaining this the whole time, but I could rinse through this in literally a couple of minutes. Okay, it just takes a bit of practice, but this is the professional way of finding infinite or one solution or determining if it doesn't have a solution at all. Gaussian elimination. So guys, if you learned something today, which most likely you did, please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Subscribe for more content like this. And I have a Lungang Reddit, which loads of students are already using. Uh, and I've already answered some questions from students from that page. So head over to my Reddit, post questions. Let's have a discussion. We all want to do better in our exams and we want to become better mathematicians, innit? So I'll be responding to you guys there as well. See you guys in the next video. Nice.